I think that's a big thing that I preach, which is you don't need to be the best. You just have to have fun with it. It's a hobby for everyone. Some people get so strung out and so annoyed and worried at becoming a perfectionist, and especially when they get in front of a camera. So I try to not do that. Today I have a mystery guest who goes by the name of Language Simp. I don't know what his name is. I presume he has a name. Maybe he was born Language Simp. But he is a motivator, an entertainer, a tremendous polyglot. He's a former user of Link and he claims to like my videos and like Link. So for all of these reasons, I want to talk to him. So first of all, Language Simp, can you tell us what your name is? Or is that a secret? <laughs> You're trying to get my, my personal information out of me right from the start, Steve. I wasn't expecting that. Um, Give me an alias. Give me an alias. I say that my legal birth name is Language Simp, so for the case of this interview, we will confirm that it is, in fact, my legal birth name. But I am curious, Steve, do you know what the word simp means? Well, I'm assuming it has something to do with simple. Simpleton, maybe. <laughs> it oh, does not. Okay. It's very Gen Z, and I'll say that kind of the whole crux of my channel is mm. Gen Gen Z humor and getting Gen Z type people into the language. That language would be sphere. Gen Z in Canada, okay? Gen Z, just so you know. You uh, want to be Gen no, Z. I, I don't even okay, call anyway, English enough. English. I, I call English American, so I don't know about that. But um, basically, a simp is someone who goes after women, but they, they're not very good at it. They're, they're kind of, they're desperate type thing. So in my sense, I'm desperate for oh, languages. Okay. A simp, if you're a, you can be a simp for right. someone, but I'm a okay. simp for languages. That's good. At least in that case, uh, it's it's one-sided. You can pursue the language and you don't need the language to respond. Whereas if you go exactly. for a woman yeah. and she doesn't want you, you're kind of out of luck. You know? But in, in the case of languages, even if I'm not speaking the language well and I'm struggling, I can just have exactly. fun with it at, at any level. You know, I don't need to be perfectly right. fluent. And I think that's a big thing that I preach, which is you don't need to be the best. You just have to have fun with it. It's a hobby for everyone. Some people get so strung out and so annoyed and worried at becoming a perfectionist, and especially when they get in front of a camera. So I try to that's, not do that. I couldn't agree more. I think 100% that's true. And the other fun thing about being a language simp is that you can pursue five languages and none of the languages get jealous. Whereas if you are pursuing exactly. five women, yes. you might start getting into trouble at some point. Yes, I, I've never pursued five women, but five languages at the same time, yes. Although it gets a little rough when you're studying three at the same time, which I knew yeah. you were doing Turkish, Farsi, and Arabic I gave at the up. same time. That must have... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to admit that you can give up and right. not be embarrassed well, to, to share that. I shouldn't that, say I know? gave up, but uh, I've put Turkish on the back burner, and I want to get enough exposure to the Arabic script that I get good at it. With Arabic, too, you got Egyptian, Levantine, Fusha, so there's enough there to keep me busy. Actually, I was looking at Turkish just yesterday, so... Any of the languages, that, I'm sure you've had the same experience, that you start a language, you leave it, it's always there. It's like a, a girlfriend that you can go and visit whenever you want. It's not a, a love affair, but uh, you go there and you enjoy being together and uh, it's fine. Well, as long as you didn't move on to another woman. But yeah, I understand <laughs> yeah. what you're saying. Um, <laughs> Depends what you mean by move on to, too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, funny thing with the Arabic script, I'm someone who loves alphabets. I don't know if you've seen my videos. I actually recited the Arabic and Russian alphabet for 10 wow. hours straight, just continually on live stream. And a lot of people enjoyed that. But um, I actually can't read very well. And that's why I stopped using Link right. back in the day. I have a lazy eye. I don't know if you can see that very well. No. If you, But I've got okay. an eye kind of going off to the side. And uh, it makes it really difficult to read. And it's gotten a lot worse. But uh, back in the day, I used to... I was studying Russian on Link for about mm -hmm. a year. And I, I was in a lot of pain because it's, it's hard to read. It, it stresses right. my eyes. And instead of giving up like a normal person or just going to audio only content, I doubled down and started to do it for three hours a mm -hmm. day timed. So there was a point in my life where I wore an wow. eye patch on my right eye and I was just using Link and just studying the mini stories and stuff for three hours a day and torturing myself. But it worked. Uh, my Russian was pretty decent. <laughs> you are a simp with an eye patch. I was a, a pirate, a simp pirate with an eye patch using Steve Kaufman's beautiful site. So, but no, I think three at once is a lot. Two at once, I mean, it's kind of got advantages and disadvantages. The advantages of focusing on one is you improve more quickly in the one where you're focused. The advantage of doing two is that you get a bit of a break from one and you go to another, so things stay fresh. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I don't know whether you're further ahead doing one at a time and then doing the other, focusing on it, or whether you're better off to do two at a time. I don't know. And personal preference. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely study a few at a time, but it just slows the progress. But I, I always tell people, sometimes people come to me, they say they feel this burnout and they really don't want to continue. And I always say, 
just quit. Take a break. As you said, when you come back to it, you're not going to lose no. everything. I mean, maybe the, the few things that you learned right at the end will be a little fuzzy, but take a break. Go study another. This is a hobby for everyone. I think a big part of my channel, too, is kind of showing how... Because you get a lot of polyglots out there who love to shock people or show off their skills in highly edited videos. And I like to show them, no, it's fine if you make right. a mistake. It's fine if if you're not perfect in a language. You don't have to be that guy who studies French for three straight years to become perfect Absolutely. at it. Do what you want. Yeah. Have fun with it and see where it goes. First of all, uh, for those who don't know language simp, I'm going to leave a link in the description box. I've only heard you in Arabic. I've heard you in Russian. And you are very good. Very competent. Also, I'm surprised here in our conversation to find out that you're actually quite a serious guy because the uh, persona that you find on your videos is very m much more sort of a goofy guy. Uh, a goofy guy who nevertheless motivates people to learn languages by being goofy, which I think is good because at school, sometimes languages are presented as something very serious and we can't make mistakes. And if we get, you know, four out of 10 wrong, then that's bad. And and all of that stuff. And you you basically ignore all of that stuff and just enjoy your languages and do very well at it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So how did you get started in learning languages? I actually watched a World War II movie mm -hmm. back in the day, and I heard French in it, and I just fell in love. I thought it was the most sophisticated thing on the planet. Thought it was pretentious, but in a good way. I kind of fantasized about being in Paris in a nice cafe, speaking this luxurious mm -hmm. language to someone and feeling all preppy. And so I started studying it on January 1st, 2019. So that was the first time I started wow. studying a language. And I dedicated my life to it right away. And then I found you and some other people right. online. And I just realized that people can learn languages. I, I didn't even know as an American growing up, everyone says, oh, you should learn Mexican. And but no one really did it. I never saw anyone who was successful in that. So I decided or I realized, wow, this is actually possible. People have done it and it's possible with mm -hmm. multiple languages and it, it can be a lifestyle. So fell in love with it, started learning French. and never So which back. languages now do you speak? And you don't have to tell me whether you're B2 or C1 or whatever, just which languages do you speak? I like to say that I speak languages at a D1 mm -hmm. level just to completely surpass <laughs> that scale and just show people that it's kind of nonsense right. in a way. But uh so I, I'd say I'm D1 in French, Spanish, Russian, Arabic, uh, and then and then I've studied a bunch of others, flirted with Portuguese and Danish and stuff. But I also a, a big part of me is that I don't like to claim right. that I speak languages because people get so worried about that on the definition, the definition of fluency. Can I say I speak this? And I like to surpass that and say right. have fun with it. So that that's my answer. You know that Danish has the the largest number of phonemes of different sounds of any language. Oh yeah, oh for sure. I I when I was an engineer, so I actually quit my engineering job to be mm -hmm. a YouTuber now, but when I was an engineer, I worked with a bunch of Danes and that's why I started studying Danish and yeah, they speak like I don't even know. <laughs> it's that's the most insane right. thing I've ever heard. But uh when you said phonemes, I actually have no idea right. what that means because I also stay away from yeah, linguistics. Yeah. A, Not good, a, fan. a good idea to stay away from linguistics, but some of those terms, you know, you, you end up using them. So a phoneme is just a sound. Like any sound, ah, uh, ga, ha, pa. Those are all phonemes, from what I gather. I don't know. I use the term. Okay. I use a lot Makes of terms sense. that I don't know what they mean. Uh, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> phonemes. I think. I think for me, it's just. Uh, I want to just enjoy the right. language, and I like learning it and feeling almost like prehistoric before we had all these studies. We just communicate with people. We learn it. We don't have to see it written mm -hmm. all the time. We don't have to know what the conjugations mean. We just know how right. to say it because we have enough exposure. And that's kind yeah. of the way I approach but it. But at, at any rate, Arabic and Russian are very different, not to mention French and Spanish, which are similar to each other. And you do very well in all of those languages. I'm very impressed. Oh, I, I, I really appreciate that. I mean, if I if I could hear this back in 2019 when I was watching your videos and almost crashing my car because I was driving to internship uh, interviews and I had your, your YouTube videos on while I was driving and, and I would have to change them, you know, because they're only 10, 15 right. minutes long, which I do not advocate for in any right. sense of the word. Well, you need voice commands, voice commands in your car, you know. Yeah, that probably would have been better. But if I could see right now that in 2023, Steve Kaufman himself, the lingo Steve, the linguist, would be telling me that, I wow. don't even know. I, I don't know what you would know, have happened. So I, I really appreciate it. And I, I'm just a simple guy that started making videos. But like you and like many others, Luca and others, who are enthusiastic about language learning, we do have an ability 
to influence other people. So we do good things. Like it's a good thing to learn languages. It's good for people. It's good for people's ability to communicate with others. So it's nice to do something that's a good thing. So you do a good thing. I think I do a good thing in making these videos. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And, and I think keeping it fun and showing people how it mm -hmm. can be funny. I mean, I think language learning is inherently funny. If I walk up to a French guy and I say un baguette instead of right. une baguette, they might laugh because, you know, our brains psychologically, what we find funny is something right. unexpected. So when someone says un baguette, they might laugh, but they're not laughing at you. They're laughing with you. Yeah, but uh, like rarely do they laugh. Like rarely do, it's a bit jarring. Exactly. It's funny that there are things, you know, when foreigners speak a language, there are things that are not jarring, like an accent is not jarring, but wrong gender, unfortunately, is a bit jarring. And uh, I can't remember the name of that American actress who, um, she spoke beautiful French, like pronunciation, excellent. And, and actors and actresses are very good at imitating accents, but she got most of her genders wrong. You would think 50%, you know, she'd be correct. <laughs> yeah. So genders is tough, especially in French, because in Spanish, you got the O-R that's going to help you along. But in French, it's difficult. Oh, yeah, for sure. Until you get to un right. right? That's the yeah. confusing one. That one always got me. But yeah, I think that uh, people just need to see that it's really fun and it's not intimidating. They need to give it a go. I mean, someone who's watching this, if you're hesitating, you're worried about judgment or anything, as Steve said, people aren't going to laugh at you. And when they do, from my perspective, you can laugh right. with them. And if it... It's a funny experience. And I think that there's just so many routes to take comedy with language learning as well, because switching languages so that someone doesn't understand you talking behind their back, all that yeah. type of stuff. It's just common tropes that are really yeah, hilarious. I've had a few of those with Chinese, but not as many as people think. The people think if you're riding an elevator with a group of, uh, you know, uh, Japanese that they're, and they're laughing, they're not laughing at you. You know, they have other things to talk about besides you. But people get quite self-conscious. They think other people are talking about them. They're not. But uh, yeah, have fun, absolutely. And if you want to be totally comfortable, speak your own language. When you're learning another language, there are going to be moments that are not comfortable, where you can't remember a word mm -hmm. and you make mistakes. And that just is part of the process. So how did you get out of this language simp idea? Like I've, there are different people like serious, like Steve Kaufman is out there seriously talking about language learning. And you do everything that's goofy. I always wanted to be a mm -hmm. YouTuber. I've been making YouTube videos since about uh, 2010 or something like that. Ever since I was just, I mean, I'm only 25. So I was, you know, just mm -hmm. a young kid. But I always wanted to be a YouTuber. And then I actually got into it through TikTok when TikTok became popular. I started making language sketches where like a, a police officer would chase me and I would speak different languages so he couldn't understand me. But then coincidentally, the police officer knows those languages and just just these stupid goofy encounters like that which were obviously scripted mm -hmm. but people loved and they would sometimes rack up you know tens of millions Whoa. of views so that got me Unreal. Pop popular yeah i mean i have a short video like that of a police officer that has 50 Unreal. million views on on Gosh. youtube like that's yeah some some crazy stuff but so people yeah. love that you know, someone who can switch languages in a dangerous right. situation it it, yeah, it makes yeah. it funny and um so i got popular on tiktok got to like a million followers on on that and then i got an engineering job kind of fell off and then decided no i'm gonna give youtube a try and then wow. it just worked so here i am and i'm so grateful i mean my childhood dream completed so can i ask you a question so there you are at 19 essentially unilingual english correct mm -hmm. and your family you spoke you just had english at home correct. so often you know my situation was different obviously i was born in sweden we moved to canada i heard different languages and stuff and so people say, well, you know, if as a young child you hear different languages, you have an advantage. Perhaps so. But uh, the majority of polyglots that I have met, and I've gone to polyglot conferences, grew up in a monolingual, unilingual environment. And suddenly they were turned on, they wanted to learn languages, and lo and behold, they can learn many languages. And so you are an example of that. If there's a will, there's a way. Oh, yeah, 100%. You definitely don't need any prior exposure or anything like that. I mean, I'm proof of that. It's only been like almost five years, but, and I feel like most of the languages that I'm good at, I started, you know, in the first two years and I haven't even touched that yeah. much. So it's, it's super possible. It's, it's not that hard of a thing mm -hmm. for people to do. Yeah. And especially, and, and I mean, you're a great example of being older and still being able to right. learn languages. So I hate when people make oh, those yeah. excuses. If there's a will, absolutely. there's a way. If you want to do it, you can absolutely. absolutely. Okay. Well, we should probably leave it there and I'm not going to go on your channel and I'm a bit scared because I don't know you know I mean I, here I can control what happens once I get on your channel it's no longer under my control but we're gonna give it a try you're doomed you're doomed Steve <laughs>